Hey guys, welcome back to Generous Lifestyle with Milal Weaver. In today's video, we are going to be talking about retirement or repurposement. And hey, before you skip past this video because you say I'm too young to be thinking about that or God's going to supply us, so I don't need to be watching that video. Stick around until the end of this video and hopefully what I'm going to share with you might change your view on certain things. So let's hop on straight into today's video. <music> You might be saying, Lyle, I'm in my 20s or 30s. I've still got lots of years ahead of me before I hit the age of retirement. Or you might be saying, I'm in my 50s or 60s. God has taken care of me up until now. I don't need to worry about that. I tithe and I sow. I quote the word. Wonderful. I believe you should be doing all those things. However, when I read my Bible, I, I see scriptures like the ant laying up in the, the summertime for the winter. I look at Joseph in Potiphar's house where he went and, and the, God gave a word that there was going to be lean years, seven years of lean years. And God prepared them for that by storing up. And we're not putting our faith and trust in our retirement fund. Whether you find yourself in the States and it's a 401k or in South Africa where it's your pension and provident fund. We don't put our trust in that. But I do believe that we can do our part by setting aside uh, funds or our resources for the future. So we're thinking about the future. We're thinking about the generations to come. I might be able to set aside money now and on a constant basis so that when I transition to heaven one day that I'll be able to leave an inheritance for my children's children. So think about it maybe from that perspective too. So let's drop into a few points real quick. Number one, failing to plan. And this one saddens me. Quite often when I go into a restaurant or into a shop and I see an older person working, not because they want to, because they want to pass time, but because they have to, because they haven't set aside any funds for their retirement, or as I call it, the repurposement. Repurposement, because I believe God always has a plan for us. But these people might not have set aside any funds or enough funds, and now they're forced to work to be able to keep the lights on. In fact, I know several ministers of the gospel who have led thousands of people to Jesus, but they failed to set aside any money for their future. And now they find themselves, some of them in their 70s and 80s, and they're not able to pay their mortgage. They're not able to pay bills as and when it becomes due. And some of them have actually been forced to move in with their kids and grandkids and to live in a room with them in their retirement age. I know that's a really humbling experience i'm sure for many of them my heart goes out to them but i just pray that if you're watching this and you are younger that you don't find yourself in the same position because i'm sharing this and i'm, I'm pleading with you if you have extra cash available please start thinking about the future even if you are in your 20s in this next portion of the video we're going to quickly touch on retirement from a usa perspective and then after this we'll touch on retirement from a South African perspective before we get into an example which applies to both regions. And if you find yourself in a different country, I'm sure the rules are similar, but I encourage you to read up, to check online if there's any videos which addresses what you should be doing in your region. Let's talk about the USA real quick. 403B, 401K, IRA, Roth, all these words, what does it mean? Okay, so real quickly, when I think of the word Roth, I think of after tax. So I get this, I get paid 5,000 a month, my taxes is 1,000, I've got 4,000, now I invest in, my, in the retirement vehicle. So by the time I get to retirement, I've already paid taxes over here. So when I get to retirement, the taxes have been paid and I can withdraw the cash tax-free. On the other hand, if I participated in a 401k, it's, I'm saying I'm not going to pay taxes now. So remember when I made 5,000 a month? I am contributing out of that $5,000 before I paid that $1,000 worth of tax. So as a result of that, when I get to the age of retirement, I am going to pay the tax then. I might be thinking, when I get to retirement, I am believing that the tax rate is going to be lower, so therefore I'd rather take the tax hit in the future, because it's based on what I'm going to be withdrawing. Okay, so those are the, the, the two big differences. As we speak at the moment, in the year 2022, the maximum that you can contribute to a 401k is $20,500 and that does not include an employer match. And you might be saying, what is an employer match? It is free money. It's money that your employer is giving you to participate in the retirement fund. So let's say you work at a place and they say, for every dollar you put in, they're going to put in a dollar up to a certain level. Or they quite often say, for every 
for a particular percent of your salary that you make, we're going to put in a certain amount up until a certain amount. It's free money. And that doesn't count towards your 20500 that you're able to invest on an annual basis. Next up, we'll talk about IRA and the Roth IRA real quickly. So this is different to the 401k. This is an individual retirement account. So it's where you are participating on your own. So it's not part of what your employer is making available to you. So why would you want to do that? Or why would you want to participate by yourself? Because there's more flexibility. Normally when you work at a place, they might have a certain amount of mutual funds that you can contribute to. And you are limited to those. Whereas with your IRA or your Roth IRA, you can then decide the type of investment vehicles you want to put your funds into. Again, IRA versus Roth IRA, the one is pre-tax, like the 401k, that would be the IRA. And then the Roth IRA is post-tax, so similar concept. Just bear in mind, guys, I encourage you to go into the IRS's website. There's also certain thresholds that you need to bear in mind that if you make beneath or below a certain amount, you can contribute. If you make more, you can't contribute to these particular vehicles. Also, they look at what your earned income is in a particular year and that you can really contribute up to that particular amount. So go onto the IRS's website and make sure that you look at that and you make an informed decision. But I want to encourage you, if you do have the option to participate at your employer and they've got a match, take full advantage of that. So let's talk about South Africa. So pension fund, provident fund, retirement annuity, Lyle, what is the difference? So up until a few years ago, pension and provident funds operated differently, but with changes in regulation, they are very similar. So a pension or provident fund is a retirement fund that you are able to participate in at your employer. Quite often, there's going to be an employer match. So if you contribute a certain amount, they'll contribute a certain amount. They, there's also benefits in terms of getting a tax deduction. So when you fill out your, your e-filing or your tax return, so bear that in mind and always check SARS's websites to make sure that you've got the latest information available. When you get to the age of retirement, very importantly, you need to consider um, that you can take up to a third as a lump sum and then the other two thirds needs to be converted into some form of income annuity where you can earn an income on a monthly basis. On the other hand, the retirement annuity is something that you do separate to your employer. So you go and you purchase your annuity. When you get to the age of retirement, you can take up to a third as a cash lump sum. And then the other two thirds needs to be converted into an income um, generating annuity or an income annuity where you earn money on a monthly basis. There is, however, a threshold at the moment. I believe it's about 247,000 Rand. If you are receiving less than that, I believe you can take the full amount in cash. But I always recommend to people rather have money coming in on a monthly basis, not advice, but just what I would do, so that you know that you've got income coming in on a steady basis, as opposed to using all of the funds in one go. And then the final thing before we get into the example, if you find yourself in South Africa or the USA, if you do find yourself in a position where you are hard pressed and you need money, in some instances, you can go and take loans against your retirement funds. I don't recommend that because there's penalties and, and you're pretty much robbing your future. There's also in, in the States, if you withdraw before 59 and a half, there's going to be a 10% penalty. So just consider that. And in South Africa also, there's a certain portion that might be tax-free. The rules have changed over the, the past couple of years. So every year, just make sure that you know what that amount is. But just do your best, guys, not to withdraw before the age of retirement. I know that circumstances might dictate that you might be forced into that position, but always look to see if there's another way that you can do this so that you're not taking away from your future self. So let's look at an example real quick. So this is nerdwallet.com. It's a retirement calculator. I know the rules are slightly different in South Africa, but I just want to illustrate something to you guys real quick. Let's say this person started contributing $500 per month at the age of 25 and they made $60,000 per year. If they did that until age of retirement of 67, they are going to end up with 1.39 million. 2.1 is the target and the 2.1 will allow them to maintain their current lifestyle. And I want to show you something real quick. Let's say the person waits until they are 35. 
they're only going to set aside 0 0.69, so $700,000. They're not going to be able to maintain their lifestyle. They're going to have to probably sell their house or their car by the time they get to retirement. And they possibly might find themselves in a position where they're going to have to move in with, with a family member. Let's say they wait even longer than that. They're only going to set aside 300000 if they start saving at the age of 45. So what do we do if you find yourself in a position where you say, I'm in my 40s or 50s and I just don't have enough and there's no way, even if I set aside 100% of my income, which is not realistic, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm going to have to work later in, in on my retirement years and I just wish that I'd done things differently. Number one, don't be condemned. Number two, you serve a big God who is able to provide for all your needs according to His riches in glory. Ask the Lord for wisdom with regards to what you can do right here, right now to be able to bridge that gap. I believe that there's many of you watching this video today that's got gifts and talents on the inside of you, which you can use to generate extra income. It could be a book that God has locked up on the inside of you, which is wanting you to give birth to, which could be used to generate the extra income to catch up that shortfall, even take it beyond that. There might be another form of business on the inside of you that God has given you that you've just put on hold. And God is saying, now is the time to step into that, not so that you can bridge the gap. And again, guys, notice what I'm saying. We don't put our faith and trust in the 401k or the, the pension of Provident Fund. We do apply those basic common principles and basic common sense in setting aside money. But we always trust God. We always ask Him for wisdom. And if you find yourself where it seems like there's no hope, there is hope. The Lord can get you to a place, to your wealthy place, even in the age of retirement. The Lord can get you a place where there is more than enough. He can show you what you need to do to be able to live a good life. If you find yourself and you are younger today and you haven't started, I challenge you guys, start setting aside something so that when you get to the age of 67, 68, that you've got more than enough that you can actually set aside funds for your children's children. Let's start thinking beyond ourselves and let's start thinking about the future generations that are to come. So as we wrap up this video, guys, I hope that this helped you. I hope that this maybe showed you why you need to be considering setting aside funds for retirement, especially if you are in your 20s or 30s, or even if you are beyond that, if you are in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 80s, that God is still able to provide for you. God is a good God. We don't need to be worried about finances, but there's certain things we can do in the natural to make sure that when we get to the age of repurposement, as I call it, that we don't need to be concerned. We don't have to go and work that extra job to be able to keep the lights on. If this video was a blessing to you, comment below this was a blessing. If this video encouraged you to start saving for retirement, you can comment below too and say, I'm saving for retirement. And then finally, guys, if you haven't subscribed to this channel quite yet, please consider subscribing. God bless you guys, and I look forward to catching up with you guys soon. Bye, guys.